All right, so in 5.6, we're talking about um, inverse, and what happens is you literally just switch the X and the Y. So if this is a function, F of X, we know that it's a function because every X has only one Y, so there's no cheating going on here with the X. The X is a good person, and they are not cheating on their Y. They go from one X has only one Y. But when I go to do my inversion, inversion, well, when I invert it, you switch the x and the y. So all these now, all these guys become my x's. So one, four, three, and one, and then becomes negative two, negative one, zero, and one. And what you see, hopefully, is now you have this x right here, and it's going to different y's. If I did it as a like a chart like this, one, three, four, negative one, zero, one, two. This one would be going to negative, whoops, is that supposed to be negative two up there? Did I forget that? So, sorry, negative two, negative one, zero, one. This one right here would go to, what in the world is going on? This one right here one, three, four, there we go. This one would go to a negative two and it would go to a one. Do you see how this one X has two different Y outputs? So this is the inverse of this function. This guy over here, this guy is not a function. And the other way that you would test this is if you graphed it, you would go x, 1, 1, 2, negative 2, and up to 1. It would not pass my vertical line test. There would be two different outputs for this one input. So that would be why it's not a function. But the idea is when we invert things, all you do is you switch the x and the y. So, if I gave you f of x equals x squared, and I asked you to um, find the inverse, all you do is you first change this to y because we're not sure that the inverse of it is going to be a function or not. So we change it from this. Just this is a fancy way of writing y, but it tells the person that it's a function. We're not sure if this new thing when we invert it is going to be a function, so we're going to change it to y plus. It's a little easier to work with a y than f of x. That kind of looks confusing. So first step, change the f of x back to a y. Second step, switch the x and the y and nothing else. So this is going to read as x equals y squared. And finally, we're going to solve it for y again so that it says y equals. So we're going to undo squaring it by square rooting it. Who put the square root sign in? We did. So you put plus or minus. And so y equals plus or minus the square root of x. And to prove to you that I know this is true, I'll make an x and y chart. And let's do an x and y chart of f of x. So I'm talking about this guy up here for right now. If you put a 0 in, you get a 0 out. You put a 1 in, you get a 1 out. You put a 2 in, you get a 4 out. You put a negative 1 in, you get a 1 out. You put a negative 2 in, you get a 4 out. So that's good enough. Now what I'm telling you is, if you did the inverse function, you should literally just have to go, if I put a 0 in, I get a 0 out. So 0 in, 0 out. If I put a 1 in, I should get a 1 out. If I put a 4 in, I should get a 2 out. So let's check that to make sure so far. Um, actually, we'll go ahead and finish listing them. I put a one in, I should get negative one. If I put a uh, four in, I can get a negative two. So watch what happens. If you put a zero into this, the square root of zero is zero, plus or minus zero is just zero. Check, that worked. If you put a one in, well, the square root of one is one, but then you get plus or minus. So what this says is you put X equals one, you get a Y equaling plus or minus one, which is right here. You put a one in, you get a one out, or you put a one in, you get a negative one out. So both of those check out. 
Same kind of thing is going to happen with 4. If you put a 4 in, square root of 4 is 2, but then you have plus or minus 2. So you get a, a 4 and you get a plus 2 or a minus 2. So this right here is the, this is the inverse of this. But the inverse is still not a function. Now, not all of them are not always going to be a function. Not all of them are going to be. You have to look at it. And here you have 1x going to two separate y's. If both the original and the inverse are a function, we call this over here a one-to-one -one function. That's because every x only has one y and every y only has one x. So they're called one-to-one. -one. Go ahead, I'm going to give you a minute or two to um, try to find the inverse of that and then prove to yourself that you got the correct inverse by checking it with a chart. All right, did anyone get an answer for that one? I'm still working on checking it, but I like got an answer, sort of. Austin. Austin. Jonah. Jonah, remember if you don't respond, I kick you out.
Ashton. Yeah. What was the first step that I said we were supposed to do with this? Turn the FX into Y. Say that again. I couldn't hear you. Turn the FX into Y. Perfect. That's not hard, right? That's not too difficult, I don't think, for anyone. So Y equals perfect. X minus 2. Very good. Um, Tucker, what did I say was the next step? Change y to zero? No. No. What was the what did I do at the beginning of class with my colors? Tucker, stay on mute, muted. What did I do with my computer screen? I don't really remember. Have you been here the entire class period, bud? Or are you walking yes. away from the computer? No, I've been here. OK, do you you don't remember me changing the color scheme on my computer a bunch of times? Not really. OK, all right, that's very strange. Um, so I changed my colors on my screen. I called an inversion, so I inverted them. What are someone help him out? Taylor, can you help him out on what, what my next step is to do? Again, it's really no math. Not yet. I'm not doing anything. After you invert it? Nope. Nope. Tell me what I'm supposed to do next. So all we did right now, we've changed you switch the... switch Y next? Hold on. Hold on, Orist. Yes, I know you know it, Orist. We, we changed the Y from F of X to Y. What's the next step? Taylor? You would put. Would you put the Y where the X is? And? That's the part I got stuck on. Why has it got double arrow? I'm not just putting the Y where the X is. What else am I doing, Taylor? Would you distribute it? No, no, no. I'm putting the X where. The, the, y, the y would be. Right, the Y is becoming the X, the X is becoming the Y. Kind of like my black colors became my white, and then my white became black. They are both yeah. changing. So this is becoming X equals the square root of Y minus 2. You have to have those first two steps down. Now the next step is to make this say Y equals. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this stuff so this is all by itself. So I'm going to square this side, square this side, x squared equals uh, no longer that y minus 2 because these two cancel each other out add 2 to both sides add 2 so my final answer is y equals x squared plus 2 go ahead and raise your hand if you got that correct Very good. Kelly, did you make a mistake? Um, no, I don't think so. So you got that answer? No, I did. I did. OK, I didn't make a mistake. OK. So now how I'm going to check this is by just plugging some stuff in. If I plugged in numbers into here, then when I change it to over there, it should give me the same kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to be smart. Obviously, I can't put a zero in here because if I put zero, zero minus two is negative two, and square root of negative two, first off, negative two is it's imaginary. So the first number I could put in here is just a two. And if I did, two minus two is zero, square root of zero is zero. The next number I would want to put in is a three because three minus two is one, and I like the square root of one because it's one. I would not want to put a four in there because four minus two be square root of two, and I don't want to deal with the square root of two. Same with five. So the next one I'd plug in is six because six minus two is four and the square root of four is two. So I'm picking nice, pretty easy numbers and that's good enough for me to check. So what this says is if I did the inversion, I should pull a zero in and if I do, I get a two out. So let's check that. 
zero squared is zero plus two is two. Check. It says if I put a one in, one squared is one plus two is three, which is exactly what I should have got. And finally, two squared is four plus two is six. So two six is this. These guys are the inverses of each other. And if you notice, if I kept going, at, there's only going to be one X for every, every X is only going to have one Y. So this is not only a function, but it's what we call a one to one function, which means it's inverse is also a function. So both of these are functions. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Find the inverse. Start off by doing the problem like I talked to you through it first. Change things, flip them, and then solve for y. Don't make this any tough, tougher than it is. Don't get scared by it. All right, so what you should have done is first, we said we change this to y equals 2 minus the cube root of x plus 1. We then switch the x and y. This becomes an x. This becomes a y. Nothing else is done. That's it. Now we start moving things back and forth. So what we're going to do, get rid of this, minus 2, minus 2. So this becomes x minus 2 equals negative cube root of y plus 1. We are then going to um, times by negative 1. And so this is going to become negative x plus 2 equals the cube root of y plus 1. We get rid of the cube root by cubing it, which means this is going to be cubed. So this is gone. So, so far we have negative x plus 2 cubed equals y plus 1. And then finally minus 1, minus 1. So my final answer, I'm going to switch these. So I'm going to put y over here. So y equals, and then all this crap that's over here, uh, negative x plus 2 cubed minus 1. And there's my final answer. And that's what you'll have homework to practice tonight. Just getting the inverses. Any questions? If not, have a good rest of your afternoon. Tia, you can stay. 
Have a good day. Thank you.